The Time Ponies and the Cutie Mark Thief vs. The Queen of Hearts Written and read by My Name is R Chapter 8 Repercussions Killing Equines don't like killing. It isn't natural, but sometimes it's necessary. Derpy, why don't you talk to Infinity about this? He's a psychologist. I feel he would be better suited to helping you. Starlight and Minuet were standing in the doctor's living room, staring at the unconscious Chrysalis. What's the circle do? asked Minuet. I think it's a magic suppressor ring, Starlight answered. I've heard of them, but I've never seen one before. They keep a unicorn from casting magic so long as they're worn and up to several hours later, depending on the model. Oh, I know about them! Some of them even lock onto the horn so only some pony with the key or a code or magic can remove them. I wonder what this one's like. They both began examining the ring. Looks old. Minuet grabbed the ring and pulled it off with her front hooves. No lock then. I wonder how long it lasts. Let's just put it back on and leave it there until she's in Tartarus, okay? Okay. Minuet put the ring back on. How are we going to get there? We'll have to walk. The good news is that if we hurry, I think we can make it back by nightfall. We just have to get her out of town without any pony noticing. I can ask Lyra if we can borrow Bon Bon's wagon. It's big enough to fit her and we can lay a tarp over it. Perfect. Bring it around to the back door. I'll keep an eye on her. I think Perfect already went home. Plus, Lyra doesn't know her, so why don't I go do that? See you soon! And with that, Minuet stepped outside and began walking towards her friend Lyra's house. I meant your idea was perfect! Starlight called after her. It didn't take Minuet long to get to Lyra's house. When she got there, she knocked on the door. Hello? Any pony home? Just a minute! called Bon Bon. After a moment, she opened the door. I'm afraid Lyra isn't home right now. She's playing in the park. That's okay. I'm here for you today. Can I borrow your wagon? We need to carry something heavy out of town, and it would be a huge help. Minuet smiled widely in excitement. Okay, it's out back. Make sure to have it back and clean by noon tomorrow, okay? Sure, thanks. Minuet trotted over behind the house and hitched herself up to the wagon. Then she pulled it back to Doc's house. I'm back! The door opened part way, and Starlight poked her head out, looking both ways. Shh! This is still a secret, remember? I brought the wagon, and I have the tarp. Now help me get her in. Starlight opened the door, and the rest of the way, and they levitated Chrysalis into the wagon, then put the tarp over to cover her. Now let's get moving. That way. Starlight pointed, and Minuet headed off, with Starlight bringing up the rear. Derpy had waited until every pony had left except for her and extra time. She had listened as Perfect Timing and Starlight had described their experiences in the other world. Then she told him about the changeling she had killed, and he suggested she talk to Infinity about it. So she headed home. When she got home, she got out her stationery and began writing a letter in case her sister got home before her. Dear Amethyst, I'm going to Canterlot. I should be home tonight on the last train. Love, Derpy. That should be good. Now, to the station. Derpy put the letter on the table and headed out. She took wing and flew towards the train station, but landed when she saw extra time walking the same way. Hello, she waved at him and then hurried over to walk beside him. Ah, hello Derpy. I take it you've decided to join us for a trip to infinity? Yep, I want to get this sorted out before we head out again. Well, I'm no expert, but maybe we can all talk about it on the way to Canterlot. That seems like it might help. Okay. Perfect timing walked home. She opened the door and saw a rolled up scroll sitting on the table. She walked over and opened it. Timing. I'm sorry about this, 
but it is something I have to do. I couldn't bear to fight over my departure, so I won't tail any pony. I hope you can forgive me. I promise I'll come back safe. Love, Inky. As perfect timing, set the note down and walked upstairs. She started to sing. Last night, while sitting by our window and gazing at the starry sky, you wrote that you would not come home, dear. You wrote down that you wouldn't say goodbye. It hurts to know that you don't trust me. You know it hurts me, dear, to cry. Now I forgive you in my heart, dear. But still you didn't say goodbye. If you thought I wouldn't let you go, then why did you go? You left me without a word. She sat on their bed and grabbed a picture of the two of them together. At night I'll see you in my dreams, dear, and wish that I was by your side. You wrote me that you didn't trust me. You wrote that you would not say goodbye. It hurts to know that you don't trust me. It hurts me dear enough to cry. Now I forgive you in my heart, dear. But still you didn't say goodbye. I wouldn't have stopped you. You're brave and strong and I won't make you be who you're not. Someday, dear, when your foes surround you and you hang your head and cry, remember me and all your sorrow. Remember that you didn't say goodbye. It hurts to know that you don't trust me. It hurts me dear enough to cry. Now I forgive you in my heart, dear. But still you didn't say goodbye. That you would think me so selfish. And then refuse what you thought would be my greatest fish. It hurts to know that you don't trust me. It hurts me dear enough to cry. Now I forgive you in my heart, dear. But still you didn't say goodbye. Thanks for telling me about your past, said some pony in a high-pitched, grating voice. It was a great way to pass the time. Remember, no telling any pony, all right? A vaguely familiar voice answered. You got it. Cross my heart, hope to fly, stick a cupcake in my eye. What's that? Has Pinky not shown you yet? That was a Pinky promise. No pony can break a Pinky promise. Okay. As Chrysalis, queen of the changelings, slowly began to regain consciousness, she heard two ponies talking. Then she heard a steady stream of creaking and groaning coming from below her. She opened her eyes and saw that she was in a small wooden box with a cloth roof. Just then the box jumped and she bit her tongue to stay quiet. Okay, on three. The familiar voice belonged to the unicorn that had been the first unexpected foe. One, two, three. The wagon began to glow turquoise and dark blue. Then she felt a sensation similar to flying, but not quite. She tried to destroy the wagon, but for some reason her magic did nothing. It couldn't be that she was too starved. She felt only the moderate hunger that never truly went away, not the deep gnawing pain of starvation. Right as the wagon's glow began to fade, she saw a stone ring on her horn. Of course, she thought, that ring must have some sort of nullifying power. How very clever of them, but they weren't expecting me to wake up so soon. Very slowly, making sure not to make any noise that could be heard outside the wagon, 
she raised a hoof to her horn and tugged on the ring. It came off with only a trifling resistance. Wow, this path is in terrible condition. I wonder how long it's been since some pony used it. Then no pony will interrupt this time. Queen Chrysalis thrust open the fabric and stood tall over the two unicorn ponies she had heard. Without those other meddlers, you stand no chance against me. She looked around and saw that they were in a rocky valley with scraggly trees and a cool autumn breeze, yet with not a sign of snow. Where have you taken me? You can't use your magic, and we outnumber you. Stand down, said the troublemaker, but Chrysalis could taste her fear. I removed your little trinket, but if that's your story, then how about a demonstration? She fired a blast of magic at the troublemaker. I think this one lasts a while after being removed, said the annoying one, as they all noted the lack of anything coming from her horn. Either put your disabling ring back on, or I'll just put you back to sleep, the troublemaker threatened. Chrysalis considered refusing, but decided that if she stayed awake, they might slip up and let her defeat them without magic. She reached down and grabbed the ring, but then she had an idea. She tried to transform. In a flash of green, she took the form of a hummingbird and began flying away. Derpy, Extra Time, and Perfect Pace were all sitting in the last coach. So, what is it you wanted to talk about? asked Pace. Derpy, would you like to share? Extra Time offered. Well, I was told about the Changeling Invasion, and I thought it sounded like a war. That's what it is, right? Well, you're the only one on this train who saw it, but from my interviews it certainly sounded like one answered Extra. Why do you ask? Well, we're not supposed to use our spears when in active service except in times of war. So when I was grabbing my armor, I had to decide if this counted. Yes, Derpy, bringing your spear was fine, Perfect Pace interrupted. No ponies going to get you in trouble for unauthorized use of government property. Was that all you needed? No, Pace, that wasn't the issue. Derpy, please continue, if you feel comfortable. So, I went through the portal, and when I got out, Starlight said to guard the portal. Then Minuet came through the portal and was dizzy. We were all dizzy after the portal. I forgot to mention that before. It's okay. Keep going, said Extra Time. So, after Minuet came through, a changeling came in from the main fight and flew straight for Minuet. Then I tried to stop him. First I tried to intercept him, but I was too slow, so I thrust my spear out to stop him. It hit him in the side and drew blood, but I was distracted at the time, so I didn't think much of it. When I came back later, he was dead. Perfect Pace stared at Derpy for a moment. I can see why they only use spears in times of war. Are you okay, Derpy? I just don't know. Tall Order walked through Ponyville towards Town Hall. He wanted to look over any bill proposals that the mayor had drafted last week, since he had been busy lately. It wouldn't do to go into the meeting tomorrow without knowing what they would be voting on. When he reached Town Hall, he saw that there was a strip of recently swept area on the steps leading up to the main door. How odd, he thought. Why would some ponies sweep only part of the steps? Putting the thought aside, he walked up and unlocked the door, then stepped inside. After several turns, he reached the common area for the city council. On one table sat two scrolls rolled up with a seal on them. The one with the mayor's seal on it was broken, but the other one was still sealed and bore the sheriff's seal. That's odd. I can't remember the last time Inquisitor bothered to use her seal of office. He broke it open and began to read. Fellow council members, I regret to inform you that urgent business has called me away from town. I do not know when I will be back, so in the meantime I leave perfect timing as acting sheriff until I return. 
I am sorry that I could not offer two weeks advance notice, but I only learned of it today. Sincerely, Sheriff Inquisitor. This must be new, or somebody else would have already opened it. I wonder if I can catch her before she leaves. He rolled the scroll back up and headed out into the Ponyville streets. It was only a few dozen feet before he was standing in front of the house that Inquisitor lived in. He rapped on the door as loudly as was proper. Hello? Miss Inquisitor, are you home? A minute or so passed before he knocked again. Is any pony home? A call rang out from within the house. Just a minute. After a little while, the door opened to reveal Miss Timing standing in the stairway. She sat down and called in a tired voice. Hello, Counselor. Oh, what can I do for you today? I just got a letter from the Sheriff. Is she still here? No, she left this morning. I take it she didn't tell you before she left either. She left without telling her deputy. She... Perfect timing paused for a moment, then started again. She left a note for me this morning. We didn't talk before she left. Well, she said in the note in town hall that she left you acting sheriff. So, you need to come by tomorrow afternoon for the meeting. Okay. Anything else? Did she tell you why she left? It's... rather personal. I'm sure you understand. Of course. Well, in that case, I'll just be going then. Thank you for your time. Tall Order stepped away from the door, and Perfect Timing closed it. Then he headed back to the town hall to read up on tomorrow's agenda. Starlight hit the hummingbird with a stunning spell, and it went down immediately. After a moment, Chrysalis returned to her true form. Well, that was a close one, huh? I'm glad you hit her. Just imagine what would have happened if she'd gotten away. Help me get her back in the wagon. They lifted her into the wagon, and Minuet hooked herself up to the wagon again while Starlight lifted the ring. I'm glad this was one of the ones that prevents you from casting magic for a prolonged period. Good to know that it doesn't prevent shapeshifting. I wonder why they didn't tell us. That would have been nice to know going in. Maybe they'd never tested it, Minuet suggested. I have an idea. Stand back. Starlight summoned a glass jar and set it beside the wagon. Then, she fired a pale green ray at Chrysalis. A black blob seeped out from her and gathered in Starlight's telekinesis, which she then deposited into the jar, sealing it tightly. What was that? A modified version of my cutie mark removal spell. She stored the ring away in her extra-dimensional pocket. I took away her magic. That should prevent her from doing any more shapeshifting. They started off again. Starlight cleared her throat. I read up on it last week. To open Tartarus only requires a fairly simple bit of spell work. I'll show you in case you ever need to work the lock later. If it's that easy, then why is it the most secure prison ever? Because Cerberus doesn't let you take any pony out unless he knows you, so it's easy to drop some creature off, but hard to get them back out. Does he know you? No, but we're dropping off, so we should be fine. They walked in silence for a few minutes before they saw their destination. A huge pair of dark red doors with bright red patterning on them stood embedded in the side of a mountain. Spooky, said Menuet as Starlight walked up to the door. Okay, all you have to do is channel your magic into the hole in the center of the lock. Like so. Starlight poured some of her magic into the hole, and the black lines on the gold lock started to glow white. Then the four small diamonds on the corners each turned 90 degrees, and the doors swung inward. Now all we have to do is find a good spot to put her. As they walked in, the doors swung shut behind them. Are they supposed to do that? asked Minuet. I guess. I've never done this before. As long as we can open them from the inside. We can open them from the inside, right? Yes. 
as long as Cerberus lets you. Speaking of, where is he? Starlight and Minuet looked around, and then heard loud footfalls. A giant, three-headed black bulldog with red pupils and a spiked collar on each neck leapt into view. There he is. Hi, Cerberus, Starlight called, putting on an award-winning smile. We were just wanting to drop off a very bad pony. Can we do that? Cerberus growled threateningly, but then stood aside to let them pass. They walked by in silence. After a little longer, they reached a twisting staircase over a bottomless chasm. Minuet unbuckled herself, and they used their magic together to carry Chrysalis over the chasm. It has been some time since I have received visitors. A quiet voice called in a friendly yet subtly sinister manner. And I see you've brought a changeling. Starlight and Minuet stopped walking and stared at the frail and starving creature before them. Whoa, you look terrible, said Minuet. Are you alright, mister? Wait a minute. You're the centaur that stole every pony's magic. I was going to offer you some food, but not anymore. I want to keep my magic. And with that, Minuet stalked past the aging centaur. And what of you, little pony? Does the name of Lord T-Rex still haunt your nightmares? The memory of your magic being drained for my use. Actually, I don't think we've ever met, Starlight answered. I was out of touch at the time and only heard about you recently. T-Rex huffed. At any rate, I am curious why you are delivering a new prisoner. Normally, either guards or one of the princesses does that. Are they all too busy? Starlight picked up Chrysalis and began walking around t rex cage to the staircase opposite the one they had come up. None of your business. Oh, but it is. You see, down here all I have to do is think. If the guards and the princesses had been too busy to deal with a task so important to the safety of their precious ponies, that would mean that things were in grave danger. But now, I think they don't even know you're here. Starlight froze at the top of the stairs. How did you know that? I didn't. I merely suspected from your tone. Now I know. My next question would be why this is a secret. Starlight shook her head and began walking towards Minuet at the bottom of the steps. Maybe we were just in too much of a hurry to tell them, Starlight shot back. And now I know that, isn't it? Ponies are so easy to read. Just ignore him, Starlight. He wants to hurt us. Ah, yes, said t Rex. And you'd know all about that, wouldn't you? You've probably hurt more with your words than I ever will. Minuet was taken aback. What? I'm never mean to ponies like you. Of course not. When I'm mean to ponies, it is because I want to hurt them, while you have a natural talent for it. It springs from your mouth without a second thought. I'll bet that even those who call themselves your friends can't stand to be around you for long. Tell me, do they claim to be busy since they are capable of trying to spare your feelings? Minuet backed away and shook her head rapidly. Y you don't know anything about me or my friends. What would you know? I... Nope. Done talking to you, Minuet shouted before casting a spell that surrounded her ears in her aura. Starlight had finished securing Chrysalis in a cage, and decided that it was time for them to get out of here before the nasty centaur could do any real damage. She walked up to Minuet and tapped her on the shoulder. When Minuet looked up to her, Starlight raised a hoof towards the door and started walking. Time to go? Minuet asked hopefully, and a little louder than called for. Starlight nodded. As they passed T-Rex Cage again, he called out, Do come again sometime. This has been the most fun I've had in months. Not planning on it, Starlight shot back as they continued walking towards the door. 
Cerberus watched them closely, but made no move to stop them. Once they reached the door, Starlight tried sending her magic into the door. The door began to glow brightly, and, as though she were using telekinesis, it swung open. Then she and Minuet hurried out before the door slammed shut once more. I keep asking myself why they were attacking us. Did they want to, or were they just following orders? I can't help but wonder if they were really bad ponies. Derpy was sitting in Infinity's office in Canterlot, speaking to him about a subject he wished he had never worked with before. Interestingly enough, last time had also been about changelings. On the plus side, that meant he already had an idea how to help. Derpy, there is one thing I must ask of you. Never ask yourself if the dead deserved to die. Not unless you are prepared to deal with any answer you might find. Derpy blinked and looked concerned, so he decided to clarify. You can ask if it is right in advance, of course. To stop that invites all sorts of horrors. But don't worry too hard about that which is already said and done. Even we cannot change the past, and trying to puzzle out the correct choice will cause more harm than good. Minuet wouldn't be here with us today without your quick action. Author's Note Once again, I have never personally had to face the aftermath of a killing, and even if I had, the views and advice here are the products of the characters, and do not always line up with my own beliefs. I mean no disrespect to any facing similar issues, but take any life advice from my stories with a grain of salt. Or send me your questions and I'll tell you my true opinions, including when I know what I'm talking about and when I just researched it on the internet and cobbled together something I felt was reasonable. On that note, feel free to comment. I love to talk to my readers. Tell me what you like and where my writing was weak. Or ask me about something if you're curious about it in the story. As long as it isn't a spoiler, I'll fill you in. <clears throat> Alright, uh, thank you for listening everyone. Uh, let's see, was there anything I wanted to talk about today? Ah, yes! I remember. Let me just scroll down here. <clears throat> I'm just going to read a pair of exchanges from the comment section between me and uh, Golden Reflection, because I like those. <clears throat> is there a tune to go with the song, as I kind of had a generic one going on in my head while reading it, or is it just lyrics? <clears throat> there is a tune, and here it is, and it is, uh, what's the word? You didn't say goodbye. Uh, specifically, the one I found was performed by J.D. Crow and the New South. I'll, uh, I guess I'll put a link in the description. Obviously, the lyrics have been changed. The meaning is not the same, but I decided to make a cover of a pre-existing song, so I didn't have to come up with the tune. <clears throat> uh, question number one. What's Starlight going to do with Alt Chris's magic? Answer! That's a secret. Sorry, my lips are sealed. Question. Did she give it back after leaving her in the cage? Answer. No. This is in large part because... Question. Are Tartarus cages resistant to all forms of magic? Answer. Yes, but Starlight doesn't know that. At least, I think they are. The best way to test would be Discord. Who has already overpowered the cages? They are apparently fallible, and I don't know their precise limits. And T-Rex appears to be capable of breaking out on his own as long as Sir Burst is busy. Oh, and Pinky can slip in and out at will. Pfft, will. These things are supposed to be inescapable, but I'm starting to think Minuet had a point. Thank you for your questions. I will make note of this. Well, I think that was everything. Anyway, uh, thank you all for listening. I hope you enjoyed it, and I wish you all a pleasant time. Goodbye, everyone!